Ken Bar is brought to you by Tis the season to be jolly La 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 it is officially the holiday seasons here over at the Kempire Podcast. And I'm heading to London. So excited for our London Kempire After Dark Live experience because that is where the idea was sparked and talked about. So December 8th, we were bringing the Kempire After Dark Live experience to Neon 194. So shout out to those of you that have booked tickets to come see the show. And, and when I say tickets, I mean airplane tickets. But shout out to all of you in London that will be coming to our Kempire After Dark Live experience. I can't wait to talk about the Diddla. I can't wait to talk about Jay-Z. I can't wait to talk about Real Housewives of Potomac and Beverly Hills and so much more. You just never know what is going to be said at these shows. LA, we talked a lot about the Diddy story and a lot of people had their own tea. So I'm looking forward to see what London has to offer in that regard. So stay tuned for that. And then we're coming back to Washington, D.C. on January 24th. And then New York City, we're coming back in February. February. We haven't announced the date just yet, so stay tuned for that. Make sure that you have all of your notifications on. But first, London, you're up next. We are coming December 8th. Get your tickets available right now in the episode notes. You're listening to Kempire here on the Kempire Radio Network. Welcome back to the Kempire Channel, your number one source for pop culture news and music, entertainment, reality TV, and so much more. Tis the season to be jolly. Fa la 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 la. This is a Hot Topics Live and your Diddy update. We got a lot of stuff to unpack and to talk about. But first, as always, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe. It is a subscribers only live chat. Let me turn off my notifications because my notifications are already annoying the hell out of me. <laughs> I will be here for a short time, not a long time, okay? We do this every once in a while, and you, as you know, we were live earlier today recapping Real Housewives of Potomac and recapping Married to Medicine. So this live is not reality TV related. It's not Bravo related at all. It's just Hot Topics because, as you know, you get more than just reality TV recaps here on the channel. You get everything in pop culture. And as you know, when you come to a Kempire After Dark a live experience, that is exactly what you'll be getting as well. A mix of both worlds, but very explicit. And if you've been to a Kempire After Dark live experience, then you would know exactly it's not what you get here on YouTube. It's very different. And of course, meet and greets are available as well. So we take pictures, we kiki, we talk. I make videos for some of y'all, y'all friends that couldn't make it. Just saying. Anyway, so the next stop on the Kempire After Dark Alive tour will be coming to London. Yes, London on De- December 8th. December 8th, we'll be bringing the Kempire After Dark Alive experience to... Where, where's my... Oh, there we go. <laughs> We're bringing the Kempire After Dark Live experience to London at Neon 194. Ticket information is now available. Grace Report will be joining me on stage. We've got your aunties could never. They'll be joining me on, on, on stage as well. So make sure you're... Uh, oh, wait, hold on. You guys can't see me? Hold on. How come you guys can't see me? I see me. Here go the Mercury Retrograde. I can see me, but how come you guys can't see me? Let me see what you guys can see on YouTube. Hold on. Let's see what what is showing up on YouTube. Please hold. Please hold. Let me see. Let me see. You can't see me? No, I can see me. Why can't you guys see me? How come you guys can't see me? I can see me. How come you guys can't see me? Q says, are you coming back to New York City? Yes, I am. Stay tuned for the date on that. Some people say they can see me. I see. You see habitual T Sipper says, I see you. How come some of you can't see me and some of you can't? Okay, some people can see me. All right, look, I thought the Mercury retrograde was worked retrograding. Some of you may need to restart your your computer, your phone. All right, all right, Mama Ali says, I can see you fine. All right. Some of you need to uh, check your phones. All right, don't do this to me during Mercury retrograde. It starts today. Okay. <clears throat> Anyways, back to what I was saying. Uh, back to what I was saying, London. Yes, London, guys, will be coming to bring the bring the Campfire After Dark Live experience to London on December 8th, December 8th of, of this year. So make sure you guys check, check that information. All that information will be available in the description along with our Washington, D.C. show. And we will also be coming back to our sh- uh, a live show here in New York City. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for that. All right. Uh, Kiana says, hi, Kempire. So happy to catch you live. I was so bored. <laughs> 
not so bored, but I'm a pre- I am appreciate it. I told you, I, I didn't promise you whether or not I was going to come live because we did do two live shows. But I was like, all right, I felt up to it. And I wanted to talk about some hot topics that we haven't had a chance to talk about and some breaking news, including some Diddy stuff as well. And I'm sure you want to know what Diddy will be having for dinner on this Thanksgiving if he doesn't make it out of jail this week. <laughs> am I supposed to feel sorry for him? Am I supposed to feel sorry for him? Because I don't. But we'll get there. We'll get there in a second. So as you probably know, the number one movie in the country is Wicked. All right? Wicked is the number one movie in the country. Come on, give him a look. That's amazing for both Ariana Grande and Cynthia Riva. I'm, I haven't seen it yet. I would like to go see it. But you know how I feel about crowds, Okay. I'm not here for that. I'm not here for, you know, oh, I, you know, everybody's up on me. You know, it's it's flu season, even though I got my flu shot. I'm going to wait until the, the hype dies down. I don't think the hype is going to die down anytime soon, but I would like to see it in a theater, but fine, okay? But I would like to see, I would like to see the Wicked movie. I did see it on Broadway when I went to London. When I went to London, that was the first time, that not on Broadway, on the West End. That was the first time I ever saw Wicked on stage. I never saw it here in 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 New York on Broadway. But congratulations to them, the number one movie in the country. But a conversation about how much each actor was paid to be in the movie started circulating this morning. And you might be shocked as to what Cynthia Riva was paid. Or maybe you're not. Because, you know, you're used to them underpaying Black women in Hollywood. Maybe. But maybe you're used to it. I, but some of us are still very much shocked. And how much Ariana Grande was paid. And look, this is not taken away from Ariana Grande. This is not on Ariana Grande. She's not the one who makes these decisions. So, uh, Distractify writes this. They said, many years we have waited for Wicked Part 1 to appear. And on Friday, November 22nd and November 21st in most theaters, the movie adaptation of the Smash Broadway musical finally arrived. So, no spoiler alerts. They said the film starring Cynthia Erivo as El Faba, El Faba, there you go. The Wicked Witch of the West and Ariana Grande as Glinda, the Good Witch of the North, exceeded opening expectations by earning a record-breaking $114 million during its premiere. Cynthia and Ariana were reprised their roles in Wicked Part 2, and based on the first part's box office success, we'll see another hefty payday for their hard work. Okay? But how much were the actors paid, the actors pay to get witchy with it. So this is what they're reporting. So when the Wicked cast was announced in 2022, many people following Ariana's career knew how badly the Grammy Award-winning singer wanted to play Glinda. Before she booked the role, she performed various Wicked songs, including her rendition of The Wizard, of, the Wizard and I at Wicked's 15th anniversary show. However, Despite playing Glinda being her longtime dream, she was reportedly all about her business while negotiating her wicked salary. According to Showbiz Galore, Ariana made a whopping $15 million to playing Glinda. While discussing the report on Stylecaster, the writer said she earned more money than anyone in the cast, including right-hand co-star Cynthia Erivo. We're not going, look, we have to remember Ariana Grande, mega star. Literally, I think they said she tied for like the, I forgot what, some record that she tied with Taylor Swift. So the, the, Ariana Grande is no slump, okay? But $15 million Ariana Grande was paid, okay? Cynthia Revo reportedly earned $1 million from her role as Alfaba in Wicked. Which relatively, which is relatively low compared to Ariana's wicked salary, though they both were able to have their fair share of screen time. Stylecaster reports that their pay discrepancy could be due to their net worths. Cynthia, she reportedly earns three million from her stage and screen roles, while Ariana's worth two hundred thirty million from her work as a singer and actor. Many familiar with Cynthia and Ariana's careers found that their reported wicked paydays inconceivable. On social media, fans debated whether the estimated earnings were accurate, while most fans on Reddit felt that Ariana likely made more money than Cynthia. They didn't believe the significant difference in their earnings made any sense. Others, however, felt that Ariana's star power resulted in her ultimately earning more than her co-star. Look, I'm not surprised that Ariana was making more than Cynthia Erivo. 
What I am shocked at is that the huge discrepancy. And look, there were plenty of people that were pushing both for Ariana's role and for Cynthia's role. Both of them had to audition for these roles. So if Cynthia Revo made $1 million, can someone explain to me how Jeff Goldblum and Michelle Yeoh, Michelle Yeoh, Oscar winner, fine. Jeff Goldblum, legend, yes. These two both made $2 million reportedly each for their roles. And from what I hear, they didn't have huge roles in the first part. I think Jeff Goldblum, oh, was it Jeff Goldblum? I can't remember who they said was going to have a bigger role in part two. I think it was one of the other actors. But either way, these two were paid $2 million to be in Wicked. More than the star. <laughs> More than Cynthia Erivo. So the reportedly, Cynthia Erivo is going to be put up for consideration for the Oscars for lead actress. Ariana Grande for supporting actress. I think they did that strategically so that both would have an opportunity at actually winning. I've heard nothing but great things about the Wicked movie. Wicked is not my, my favorite musical, but I, I heard that it's very different than the musical and even the book. So I'm actually interested to see what they did with it, but I've heard nothing but stellar reviews. Like, people were completely shocked. But the $1 million discrepancy between Ariana Grande, well, the $1 million salary for Cynthia Revo and Ariana Grande making $15 million, look, we get it. Ariana Grande has more social media followers. She has a huge, a huge career. But let's not forget that Cynthia Revo was nominated twice for an Oscar in the same year for the same movie. She is a Tony Award-winning actress. This is a huge film. So I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to understand where we went wrong. I hope in... Here's the thing, though. Yes, this movie did really well, but it's really important in Hollywood to make sure you get a good starting point because how much will they give her for part two of Wicked? Which I believe is already filmed. So if you start low... How much further can you go? I mean, they could go as further as, as they want, but sometimes that's what they use in, in their negotiations. Like, well, we gave you $1 million, so there's no way that we can give you $15 million. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I could see that being an argument. Uh, Nadia says potential EGOT status. Yes! She already has an Emmy, a Grammy. Another Emmy. What was it, Emmy? Yeah, EGOT. Emmy, Grammy, she doesn't have the Oscar, but she's been nominated for Oscar, and she has a Tony. And they said if she wins it, she'll be the youngest EGOT. So, yes, KB says, yep, yeah, it's already filmed. And I look, shout out to the director of, of Wicked. I heard he did a fantastic job. This is I've seen so many different videos where people are talking about how this was filmed. A lot of the, you know, they, they did use CGI, but they didn't do, use a lot of CGI. The, the actors all had to sing. Cynthia Revo did her own stunts. So wait a second. So Cynthia did her own stunts. Look, y'all saved money on a stunt double. Cynthia, you good. <laughs> but she says, look, the interviews for, for Wicked have been interesting. People have made all kinds of parodies and jokes about the interviews between her and Ariana. I will say, though, some of the solo interviews that Cynthia has done have been far better. I don't know what it is. And I appreciate them being emotional and, and caring and loving towards each other. I actually prefer the, the Cynthia Revo interviews that she's done alone, to be honest with you. Okay? Creme Boulet said she would also be the first Black British woman to be, become an EGOT. I mean, you don't get anything special b besides the glory of being an EGOT, but it's, it's still a big thing. I will say this, though. There are quite a few people getting EGOTs, but the way they originally were supposed to be gotten, like you were supposed to be just an artist, some people are getting these EGOTs because, oh, I produced a, a Broadway play as opposed to being in a Broadway play. I'm not, Look, I'm not shading, but I'm shading. <laughs> just saying. As someone that grew up le learning what an EGOT was when there weren't that many EGOTs in the world, now all of a sudden, everybody named Mama EGOT. <laughs> Sorry. I said what I said. But anyway, Cynthia Revo did her own stunts, and she sang live. Like, they're singing live. Shout out to all of the actors that were involved in this. But Cynthia was doing all kinds of flips and turns, flying with a broom. She said she had a train for this. 
all for $1 million. And my thing is, if she was paid $1 million, it doesn't mean that she received $1 million. Between taxes, agents, managers, then how much money did Cynthia Revo actually walk away with? I'm just saying. It will be interesting to see what she will be paid for part two. But like I said, when you start low, <clears throat> that's why when they say when you negotiate, you should always ask for an astronomical amount because then you can work your way way down from there. But it, that's why anytime, shout out to all my, my influencers and content creators, you know when they ask, so what's your budget? Mm. <laughs> what's your, no, what's your budget? How much can you really give me? Because look, Taraji P. Henson during the promo for The Color Purple talked about how black actresses are underpaid in this business. And a lot of people said, you know, Tyler Perry was the, the person to pay me my worth. Look, how much she pay you? You know what it, what it is. We need to start talking more about how much we're getting paid and be very open about it. But I get it. People don't want to talk about how much they're getting paid because some of that will explain how they're not as rich as people think that they are. You know who I appreciate for talking about her, her like being very vulnerable about that? Kiki Palmer. Kiki Palmer is a star. Like she's still so young. Her future is so freaking bright. I just love her. And yes, yeah, she's a Virgo. <laughs> I like I like Virgos. Come on. They just work my nerves sometimes. Look, sometimes. Okay? But no, I'm not surprised. I say all that to say, y'all better pay Cynthia. Y'all, this, this damn company and, and everybody else, the producers and things like that, made tons of money in the first weekend. How much did it cost to make Wicked? I think they already made it in, on, the, on the weekend. And I wonder if Cynthia, that's a thought. I wonder if Cynthia in her negotiations, look, I don't know, in her negotiations also gets a percentage of the movie. I mean, that that's one way you can actually, you know, make back your money. I wonder. I'm just asking. As so many people, Kira says, Kira, beautiful f- photo, Kira. Kira says, I just found out that Cynthia's partner is Lena Waithe. A lot of people don't know that, but I'm trying to ride on, I'm trying to help my girl Cynthia Revo. I do not want to get into the messy past of how Cynthia Revo and Lena Waithe got together. I'm not going there with you people and how it overlapped with Lena Waithe's then wife. <laughs> Come on, why, you, why, why, why are you bringing me there? Okay, let's move on because I have so many other things that I need to talk about. Let's talk about Liam. Let's talk about Liam Payne. Oh, damn, Liam Payne. This story about Liam Payne's passing is so tragic. It's so sad because could this could his death been a pre- pre- been prevented? That is that is the question that I have. So this is what TMZ is reporting in regards to Liam Payne, you know, formerly of One Direction, who passed away after falling off of the balcony in his hotel. Okay? So this is what people are saying. They're saying that the hotel is to blame for his passing. I don't know if I want to say that, but that's that's what they're reporting. So TMZ says that Liam Payne was trying to escape his hotel when he fell to his death, and the hotel knew he was threatening to use the balcony as the means to escape, but left him by himself. This, according to witnesses, the police report a 911 call and surveillance video. I'm not going to show you the screenshots. If you would like to see the screenshots from TMZ, TMZ's report, that's available on their page. So TMZ says, here's what they know. Liam hated being locked up in the hotel room, something he had to deal with during his time in One Direction. He talked about that in, in a recent interview. He had used the balcony escape plan before, most recently in mid-September, when sources with direct knowledge tell TMZ Liam's bodyguard was concerned he might have been on a drug binge and forced forced him inside a room in a Florida rental house. Liam escaped from a balcony using a garden hose to reach the ground. At the surveillance shots from the Casa Sor Palermo Hotel in Buenos Aires, Liam was was being uh, who was dr- disruptive in the lobby and clearly under the influence is they said splayed out on the three hotel workers carrying him to his room minutes before he fell to his death. Liam is clearly conscious, although TMZ blurred his face. He is holding his head upright. So, and just two minutes before he was carried, Liam was standing upright in the lobby. And they have a photo from the surveillance video. So when the hotel employees got Liam to his room, he struggled with them, clearly not wanting to go inside. 
They have a photo of that as well. The hotel used the master key to enter the room, put Liam inside, and according to the police report obtained by TMZ, they removed a mirror from the wall directly outside his room, presuming, presumably so he wouldn't damage it. This is interesting. So they had a master key, but they weren't able to get into his room when they called 911 saying that they were concerned for his safety? It's obvious Liam told the employees he did not want to be in the room and would use the balcony as an escape because one of the employees called 911 minutes later and said they feared he might use the balcony and accidentally hurt himself. According to the 911 transcript, the hotel employee said, I don't know whether his life may be in danger. He is in a room with a balcony and, well, we're a little afraid. So the hotel employees left Liam alone inside the room where he fell to his death. It's apparent he was trying to escape via the balcony because because when his body was found, he had a bag strap around his shoulder, oh, which was not on him when he when he was carried from the lobby. Oof. Police also found a hat on or nearby Liam's body. The hat is telling he had he had to have put the hat hat on inside the room because it wasn't on him in the lobby. It seems Liam was trying to get from the third floor balcony to the second floor balcony and then jump a short distance to the ground. This theory is supported by the police report, which says two days later, Liam, two days after Liam's death, a hotel employee went to the second floor room right below Liam's and discovered a brown leather bag, not the bag strapped to his shoulder, on the balcony with a note inside that said, for Liam, along with various pills and a bottle of Jack Daniels. The report says that the bag belonged to Liam, so presumably he dropped the bag to the second floor balcony before attempting to drop down himself. This is sad. Sounds like his death could have been prevented, clearly. The coroner says that Liam may have been unconscious when he fell, but he was clearly conscious when he strapped the bag to his shoulder inside his room and walked to the balcony. One one source says, with direct knowledge, believes that Argentinian authorities are trying to protect the hotel. And that's why they've gone after three people, a friend, a waiter, and a then-hotel employee who allegedly supplied Liam with drugs. The source believes that the hotel bears responsibility for allegedly caring more about disruption in the lobby and protecting hotel property than caring about Liam's safety. Well, it sounds like the, the Liam's family needs to be up on this, and apparently Liam's family has been working with Argentinian police. For those that are just joining us, we're talking about Liam Payne, formerly of One Direction, who passed away after jumping off of his balcony in in Buenos Aires, Argentina. All right, but that's the update in regards to what TMZ has. Speaking of really sad news, T.D. Jakes. I don't know if you guys saw this story about T.D. Jakes. So T.D. Jakes was, I guess, you know, pre- you know, preaching to his preaching to his you know congregation, and had a medical episode live. So TMZ is giving us an update in regards to T.D. Jakes and his his current condition, and according to and and a. A, a statement from 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 his church. So Bishop T.D. Jakes, the founding pastor of a Texas megachurch, is getting lots of well wishes from folks concerned about his scary medical uh, emergency during Sunday's sermon, including calls from some celebrities. So the sources to the close to the situation tell TMZ that Jakes is being inundated with calls from all over the world Monday with people sending their best and hoping for a speedy recovery. According to TMZ sources, Jakes has received thousands of messages, including from parishioners, various organizations, media outlets, sitting presidents, and even celebrities. The calls are private, we're told, so no names for those well wishing Jakes well, but it sounds like he's got an impressive Rolodex, or at least a lot of people who care about him. I mean, he's, he's definitely one of the most established figures, especially in the religious world. He's a, definitely a, a, a well-known name. So Jake's sermons are shared internationally with worshipers in faraway places like Africa, the Caribbean, Canada, and the United Kingdom. With folks there watching his messages on streaming platforms, which TMZ's told is why he's getting calls from all over the globe. 
So as T- TMZ reported, Jakes was giving giving his hour-long sermon Sunday when he appeared to suffer a medical emergency convulsing on stage. It's actually interesting to watch because the way that the church rallied around him with prayer and immediate action, I know some people are saying that they felt like they should have moved quicker. I don't think they realized what was happening. It's hard to tell because he's sort of like looking down. And I'm not going to show you the video. It's just I, I don't think I would want to see video of me going through a medical emergency. But you, it's hard to tell to see what's happening because he's mid-sermon and then he stops a bit. So I think they're not, they're, maybe they're thinking that he's taking a pause. But as soon as they, they see that he's going through something, everyone rallies on stage. The church starts praying. I don't, to me, it was actually pretty powerful watching it. But this was a statement from from the Powder House of Dallas saying, During today's service, Bishop T.D. Jakes experienced a slight health incident and received immediate medical attention following his powerful hour-long message. Bishop Jakes is stable and under the care of medical professionals. The entire Powder House family is grateful for the outpouring of love, prayers, and support from the community. Thank you for understanding and continued prayers. So that that was an official statement that they released after this medical emergency went viral yesterday. So as 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 the the message stated that that he's stable under a doctor's care. Look, we're going to continue to send prayers for for TD Jakes. I mean, I always say this to you guys: if you don't have your health, it doesn't matter how much money, power, influence, love. If you don't have any of that, if you have all of that and you don't have your health, then is it worth it? You can't enjoy it. You can't enjoy it. So we definitely will continue to send our prayers for Bishop T.D. Jakes as well. All right. Uh, Are you ready for your Diddy update, y'all? Are you ready for your Diddy update? I think you are, right? Let me just make sure that... Let me just make sure that I have my story that I wanted. So I have this one, okay? Let me... Look, because there's a few things I want to talk about in regards to Diddy. So as you know, Diddy, we've been covering Diddy. I keep telling you that every time we cover Diddy, it feels as if YouTube specifically wants to suppress those videos. So if you've been missing your Diddy updates, go directly to my page so you can get those updates. As you know, Diddy is attempting for a third time to make bail. A third time he's trying to to make bail, okay? And he's entitled to a third time because he has a third judge now overseeing it. He's been denied twice. He's been denied twice in regards to getting bail. And as you know, he had a little bit of a win last week, a little bit of a win. And that's that was because the prosecutors could not include these jail cell notes that he had that, you know, he admitted to certain things in regards to his contact with Kalena Harper. But his attorney said that this was attorney client privilege. The judge, the judge agreed and said that the that they could not include that in in their justification for Diddy to get released. The prosecution, though, has some other stuff in in regards to Diddy, and they they're saying that Diddy has not been following the rules since he got into prison. Okay, so let me give you. I'm just we'll start off light because as you know, it's Thanksgiving this week here in the United States. So they do give us an update on what Diddy will be eating on Thanksgiving Day. Okay? They said Diddy will be spending his Thanksgiving either on house arrest inside a cozy New York City apartment or behind bars at the Metropolitan Detention Center. And TMZ says they got the 411 on his prison meal if he stays locked up. The disgraced music mogul will have to endure a yucky turkey dinner in the slammer if federal judge rejects his fourth request for bail this week. I, just, I, I, I really find it interesting. Oh, sidebar. They did say, you know, he wanted to possibly get released and be able to stay in Miami. They're saying that he could not stay in Miami because there is a dock behind his house. And although there's not a boat there, they don't, they say that my his Miami home would not be sufficient. So he probably would have to stay here in New York. I was kind of looking forward to him getting that bad juju out of New York, but it is what it is. Okay. I don't know if they're going to even release him. So TMZ continues. It says, as you know, Diddy has already been shot down to two other times by judges to be released on a $50 million bond as he put up his Miami Beach mansion as collateral and offered to be placed on house arrest with 24-7 security, among other conditions. 
He wouldn't be around any women. He would only have his family come over. He gave up his his daughter's passports, his mother's passport, even used his mother's home, okay, as collateral. So they, they say if he stays in jail, though, Diddy will be forced to consume a standard three-meal Thanksgiving Day menu, starting with breakfast, which includes fruit, cereal, pastries, and skim milk. Then for lunch, Diddy will munch on turkey roast, hot and sour tofu, mashed potatoes, mixed vegetables, cranberry sauce, turkey gravy dinner, rolls, and holiday pies. For dinner, Diddy will be served a peanut... No, shut up. Y'all, this can't be right. This can't be... This is not right. This is not true. So for his dinner, he better enjoyed lunch. For dinner, Diddy will uh, be served a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Come on. (laughs) I'm not making this up. They got the report. I'm looking right at the report. P&B and jelly. (laughs) Potato chips, whole wheat bread, fruit, and a beverage. Ah. What? What? All right. <laughs> Judy said, woo, 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 the diddler. If you at the L.A. show, we got a lot about the diddler. So for dinner, I guess the lunch is supposed to be like the big Thanksgiving. I mean, it's very West Indian over there. Maybe because it's Brooklyn. So you have your, your, turkey, your turkey dinner during your lunch. Okay, but for dinner, he's going to be given a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, potato chips, whole wheat bread, and a fruit beverage. So wait a second. Are you getting a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and a slice of bread? That's a lot of carbs. Don't send me to jail. I don't need any more carbs in my life. Mmm. That's a lot of carbs. And potato chips? And a fruit beverage. Okay. TMZ says it all sounds pretty gross compared to what he might have been having if he's been freed on bail and enjoying a fancy meal at the Upper East Side apartment, which is the living arrangement he proposed to the judge during his last bond hearing. Okay, Diddy. But uh, of course, another day, another Diddy lawsuit. Let's just talk about what Deadline's reporting. They said in their headline, Diddy, Sean Diddy Combs' decade-long's pattern of violence has to be a factor in the latest bail consideration prosecutors tell the judge. So this article came out today. So I said I wanted to talk about it here. So the outgoing U.S. attorney, oh, did you hear about this? So people are speculating that this has to do with Diddy. No. The outgoing U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York Damian Williams, he's leaving. He's resigned. But we have to remember, there's also a new president coming in. And all of that's related, okay? So the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York warned a federal judge Monday to be aware of, of bail efforts for Sean Diddy Combs as the Bad Boy Records founder has an ongoing history of obstructive conduct and has physically abused his personal staff. Combs is charged, as you know, with racketeering, as trafficking, a transportation, blah, blah, blah. The 55-year-old Grammy winner who entered a not guilty plea after his arrest September 16th is also facing a flood of civil suits filed almost daily centered on his celebrity-attended drug field and videotape freak-offs. He's looking at life in prison if found guilty in the criminal case, a trial set to start on May 5th. So, in fact, citing currently incarcerated Combs for his decade-long pattern of violence, Damien Williams' office painted a picture today of the defendant for for the judge that is far more vivid than almost anything we have heard from the circumvent U.S. attorney so far. So let me read to you what he says here, okay? So they said, over the years, the defendant's physical and sexual abuse has taken forms often in the context of long-term romantic relationships. Throughout, there was a common theme. The defendant repeatedly and consistently forced and coerced women there we go, women to satisfy his sexual desires. Often behind closed doors, the defendant engaged in acts of violence against women, including throwing them to the ground, dragging them by their hair, kicking, shoving, punching, and slapping them. He manipulated, coerced, and extorted women, including by applying them with drugs, threatening to withhold financial support, and threatening to disseminate S-tapes that the defendant had made of their sexual encounters. He intimidated women, including by displaying firearms, threatening them, showing up at up at their homes unannounced, and attempting to beat down the door, on one occasion with a hammer. 
And beyond his romantic partners, the defendant also physically abused his personal staff. Former staff mem- members have described the defendant threatening to kill them, throwing objects at them. Is this KK? Christina Corum? Is this her? Because we haven't seen or heard from her. Former staff members have described the defendant threatening to kill them, throwing objects at them, and being struck, punched, and shoved by the defendant, and seeing him do the same to others. The significant history of violence must be taken into account when viewing the defendant's obstructive activity. Taken together, there can be no doubt that the government has proven the defendant's dangerousness by clear and convincing evidence. Well, Diddy's attorneys, as you may recall, in their original motion in response to the Southern District of New York, they said that, well, what happened with this guy, the former CEO of Amber Crombie, Mike Jeffries? How come he was released on a $10 million bail and a lot of the accusations against him are very similar to Diddy? They're not exact, but they're very similar when you read through it. So after some some rough going hearing at the New York's Daniel Patrick Monaghan courthouse on November 22nd, in the third attempt by Combs' lawyers to get him sprung with a $50 million, $50 million bail package, the judge told all parties he wanted, to, he wanted further submissions by 9 a.m., specific time, so 12 p.m. New York time, Monday before making decisions. With conflicting accounts of what really went down during an alleged pre-planned raid a few weeks ago on Combs' cell at the Metropolitan Detention Center, the ruling from the judge on whether uh, uh, Combs could get bail and end up under 24-7 surveillance in a three-bedroom apartment in Upper East Side apartment is expected any time before Thanksgiving. The judge don't want to think about this stuff right now. The judge doesn't want to think about this stuff. Someone just asked, do you think that Trump will pardon Diddy? Nope. I don't think... Diddy, Trump is going to pardon somebody else before he pardons Diddy. I don't see that happening. First of all, you can't pardon someone that hasn't been convicted yet. Right? I'm pretty sure that, that, that he hasn't been convicted yet. So although the defense has an inclination to link itself to some of Donald Trump's more recent legal battles, today they are very much planting a flag of family and free speech for their client. For months and months, government agents, plaintiffs, attorneys, and others with questionable motives have been polluting the airways with false and outrageous claims about Mr. Combs, the eight-page correspondence signed by attorneys, by Diddy's attorneys. They said this nonstop drumbeat of negative publicity has destroyed Combs' reputation and will make it virtually impossible for him to receive a fair fair trial. Mr. Combs is not required to sit idly by and acquiesce to all of this. Acquiesce, I love that word. Um, He has a right to a fair trial and a constitutional right to speak out on his own behalf. They add in terms used in previous filings, the government's arguments uh, that arguments that asking his children to post birthday wishes on Instagram and that he is not entitled to publicly express his opinion that this prosecution is racially motivated are quite simply an unconstitutional effort to silence him. The defense also says that the government is essentially arguing for a standard which in which that the entire press community and civil plaintiffs and the government itself can wage war against Mr. Combs' reputation, but Mr. Combs can't even try to influence public opinion himself in response. That is simply not the law. Sidebar, not to say that this is the same thing, but did you guys watch the Martha Stewart documentary on Netflix? Well, I used to think that Martha Stewart really did that thing, but now after watching the documentary, I was like, Oh, so maybe Martha didn't do anything. Maybe the the Southern District of New York was just really after her. It's not the same thing because we've been hearing about Diddy's dirty deeds for many years. But I'm just saying I had to add that. That's me twerking on a fence, but not really. Okay. So filing after the defense this morning, the slightly redacted document from USA attorney Damian Williams, who is soon to be replaced by Trump appointee. So for those that were confused, Trump appointee Jay Clayton, for the most for most part, sidesteps constitutional issues and rips the defense team led by his attorney, Diddy's attorneys, for the lack of, quote, meaningful guardrails in place in this latest swing at bail for, for Combs. The Southern District of New York's USAO also hit hard at the defense counsel uh, blasé attitude toward breaking these rules while simultaneously asking this court to release their client. They added this, does not give the government any confidence that the counsel will be able to police the defendant's conduct with any rigor. 
And with what could be called a hard kick in any bar fight, it went on to say, indeed, contrary to representations by counsel just days ago, the defendant has continued to engage in unauthorized communication with family members from the MDC by using another inmate's Contact Me ASAP account as recently as yesterday. So he's still breaking the rules? He's still breaking, Diddy is still breaking the rules. Even though it's been exposed. Oh, look, look, Lovely says, yeah, Martha was being punished for being that girl. It's not the same thing, but I, it just, it made me think, okay? So Diddy is still breaking the rules behind bars. He was already exposed for breaking the rules, and he's still breaking the rules. But wh- why am I surprised? He's been breaking the rules because he got away with it for how many years? Let me continue, because we're not done. Buckle up, y'all. So they said, while a bit more inside baseball than other comments, the U.S. Attorney's Office made it made, made in its 13-page letter on Monday, the prosecution assertion of the shell game being played by the defense may prove that the mo- most damning in any bail determination. They said after defense counsel represented unequivocally at the prior bail hearing before Judge Carter that the defendant would not reach out to grand jury witnesses, it became clear that the defendant had done just that. Phone records and electronic evidence shows that the defendant contacted witness one, hey, Kalena, Harper, repeatedly leading up, leading up to and after his appearance in the grand jury. And then the defendant apparently deleted the messages from his phone. They stated with reference to Combs's ex longtime girlfriend, Cassie Ventura, aka Wit Oh, so dear. Oh no, they're saying it's Cassie, aka Witness One, who sued him for abuse and, and R in a short lived suit last year that was settled in twenty four hours for around thirty million dollars. They said finally it cannot Hold on. It finally, it cannot be ignored that the defendant's proclivity for obstruction appears to have continued as recently as last week in court when it appeared the defendant provided falsified documents to the court. Oh, shoot. During a hearing convened to address his accusations of government misconduct. The feds added of Combs's accusation that the documents and notes labeled legal, his, his jail cell notes, had been improperly taken and photographed by MDC staff during the raid on his cell and locker. So they're saying that he, they, they consider the documents that they are talking about were falsified. They said, splaying egg all over the face of the defense, it turned out a number of those pages didn't actually have the term legal on them on the original documents, a fact that out and out pissed, uh, oh, wait, that out and out pissed off the judge last week. Oh, so acknowledging the error, as it were, of the papers not labeled legal and then suddenly labeled legal in the November 22nd hearing, the defense was noticeably silent on the issue today, as well as over the more specific matters of, of obstruction raised by the government. However, in a second filing after court hours Monday, the defense did say Mr. Combs objects to the government's submission to the extent it goes beyond responding to the court's specific question and requests that the court not consider any new or repetitive information in the government's letter. All of which is saying we plan to try again if you deny us bail this time. <laughs> OMG! I'm not done with Diddy though, y'all. I'm not done with Diddy. I, I got a couple more things that I need to mention in regards to Diddy. Okay? Let me see. So that is the update in regards to what's going, going on currently when it comes to Diddy's bail hearing. Okay? And what both the prosecution and Diddy's attorneys are saying. It was, it's going to be interesting. So Rolling Stone. Rolling Stones has this article that Sean Combs physically abused, threatened to kill his staff, prosecutors claim. So that is what we reported to you in regards to the deadline article. So Rolling Stone also reported on this a little bit earlier today. I just wanted to see if there was anything new from this. No, I don't think so. I just wanted to make sure because I had this open as well. All right. So that is your Diddy update. We're going to continue to follow all of this Diddy nonsense because it will be interesting to see whether or not he's going to have peanut butter and jelly on Thanksgiving Day for dinner. What? What? (laughs) Look. Mm. I'm not done, though, because I wanted to give you a follow-up. Remember we talked about Khalid the singer 
being outed by a former boyfriend? Well, Khalid just went on his Instagram story to talk all about it and break down some of the misinformation that his ex, his ex from, from like four or five years ago. So he went on his his social media and said this in his Instagram story. Okay, guys, I'm going to play this for you. Leave this all in the past. I know I don't have to, but I feel like it's important that I speak my side for the situation. So if you want to listen to it or whatever, there you go. All right. I'm going to speak about the pink cocaine thing. I've never done cocaine a day in my life. I don't place myself in those scenarios. I'm not in those surroundings. I smoke weed and I drink a little bit, but I've never done cocaine a day in my life. For real. Let's tackle this escorting thing. I've never paid for sex a day in my life. Ever. I've never paid anybody to date me. I've never paid anybody to be in a relationship with me. Ever. I'm on. Pause. He also he also called Khalid ugly. And if you can see, this is Khalid with no filter, nothing. Khalid's not a bad looking guy. He's not a bad looking guy. I have to say, after watching this, I was like, oh, Khalid. He seems like a nice young man with a nice voice. Anyways, continue. Just, just trying to watch my tone right now. But that dude and I dated four, four to five years ago, y'all. The last time that I talked to this guy was four years ago, y'all. This is all random. I don't know why he did it. I don't know what's going on Messy. with him. You know, mental, mental health is real. But I haven't even had a conversation or seen this dude in four years. I've never accused anybody publicly of breaking into my house. I've never accused anybody publicly of breaking into my house. The only people who even know about a break-in are my close circle. Pause. He also has a nice... Look, 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 look. Are we crushing on Khalid right now? He also has a nice speaking voice. Just saying. Like, I don't really pay attention to his interviews. I, it's mostly the music that I listen to. But he's very low-key, Khalid. So, sidebar, for those that missed it, he, one of his exes went on social media and outed Khalid. And some of y'all were like, we already knew. But some of you were like, oh... And then some of you were trying to make it seem like it was a bad thing that he's gay. Homophobic. Anyways. <clears throat> y'all, nobody knew. Because I don't want everybody in my business. Then again, y'all, this is four years ago. <sighs> this is four years ago. Where is this coming from? You tell me. Because like, I, I really don't know. The only reason I'm even clearing up any of this is because, like, it's just a little triggering seeing the few comments. It's not that it's this running narrative or anything like that. But it's triggering seeing the few comments of people painting me as if I'm just some manipulative abuser. It's just crazy to me. Starting the stories of the abuse, it's triggering. It's triggering. Because it's the other way around. And that, that's what hurts. That's what hurts the most. I'm not going to run around like I'm the best guy in the world. Like... If you know me, you already know that's that's not how I get down. But yeah, all of this is definitely frustrating. I want all of this to be over just like y'all. It's literally one of the main reasons why I don't involve myself in any trauma, why I stay out the way. I don't like this. So I'm not going to run around like I'm unbothered. I never said I was unbothered by anything. This, this is very bothering, for real. But yeah, I just had to say something. So, that's that. Clearly, I need to go. But, peace. And one thing, wait, 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 wait. Any music that's coming out this month, next month, whatever it is, was supposed to happen before all of this. I'm okay with where I'm at. I don't need a publicity stunt for attention. It's not my vibe. If if y'all know me, you'll know. But, I'll see y'all later. Look, for those, again, that may have missed it, Khalid's ex, who he says he hasn't even spoken to in the last four years, decided to come out and basically out him for th for them being in a relationship. And that's some other damning accusations. So Khalid, mind you, we talked about this. When, we, when did we talk about this? Yesterday? What's today? 
No, today's Monday. So I don't remember what we talked about. It was a couple of days ago that that we talked about this. And Khalid basically was responding to people on social media, but he felt the need to go on his Instagram story and clear up some of the misinformation that his ex put out there. And look, we've said this about even when we talk about reality television, all it takes is for someone to say one crazy thing on social media or on a show, and that will follow them for the rest of their lives. I don't think it will follow Khalid for the rest of his life. If anything, he's coming out looking clean. But he also w- wanted to make it clear because he probably sees the comments where people are like, oh, he's probably going to come out with a new single or something. He says, yes, new music is coming, but this this it has no- it, this has been in the works. And also, you don't just release music like that. <laughs> Anyways. Hey, Danielle. Danielle, nice new picture. Everybody got new pictures for the new year. Y'all trying to get a boo? <laughs> Danielle says he's always been laid back and chill. And honestly, I've never really been interested in anything just beyond his music. I, don't, I can't even remember listening to an interview, maybe like years ago, but li- listening to him now, I'm like, yeah, he got a nice voice, okay? Got a good hairline, good hair, like, mm, jealous. Look, I, I don't know what to tell you. This, this ex of his looks thirsty. He hasn't brought out any solid information. And Khalid, don't give him any more light. Don't even sue him. It's not worth it. We will rock with your, your next single. Let us know when it comes out. He has a very chill... He always ha- has, like... Mind you, he's got big hits, too. Didn't he have that song with um Normani that I really liked? I'd play it for you, but, you know, copyright. I like Khalid. And now I like him even more. After watching that Instagram story, I was like, you know what? Khalid, you all right. You all right. Exactly. Mr. Melon and Magic, he just does music and minds his business. Yeah, because, you know, some people are so thirsty for fame. Not everyone, especially artists that are serious about their music, they don't care about the fame. Like Adele, she doesn't care about the fame. She just wants to do her music and move on. Here, here dark, dark, cho- uh, dark chocolate? <laughs> or, I don't know what you're trying. Here they go. Kempire and Khalid. No. Khalid, how old is Khalid? Probably too young for me, too. Anyway. All right. I'm going to be a gold digger. How much he make? How much he worth? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, Lord. Anyways, Cleopatra says the ex is definitely giving thirsty vibes. You know what it is? And I've said this before, and then I'm going to end it here. I feel like in this day and age, and I feel like I'm at that particular point in my life where I'm like, I feel like the next generation is all about the viral moments. They will do anything for a viral moment. I feel like that the next generation, whatever the generation after my generation is, they're all about going viral. TikTok, it's all about going viral. Everyone is trying to go viral for whatever it is. They feel like, and look, people are being rewarded for it. Look at mom talk, those those Mormon wives. They went viral on TikTok and now they have a show. People are being rewarded for this bad behavior. Not realizing that, yeah, there are some people that go viral and they end up having a career. But if you look at the math on it, there's not a large percentage. If it's say of, of, of those people that have gone viral, maybe like, and I'm being generous, 5% actually go on to have actual careers in this business of being a known person. Honestly, you're right, Kat. This generation should be called Generation Clickbait <laughs> or Generation Viral because... Everyone is trying to do that. Everyone is trying to to have this moment. And I think because of social media and because of platforms like TikTok, they're celebrated because of that. They they get rewards. So, you know, anytime you give a reward for something, people are going to continue with the same behavior. Not realizing, and for those that have gone viral on places like TikTok or other social media platforms, they see that you go viral and then all of a sudden it, it doesn't do anything for you. It doesn't give you a brand. You don't really you don't learn how to create a brand, maintain a brand, or to do the work to continue to elevate from said going viral. So I see it all the time on TikTok. Someone gets a viral video and all of a sudden they're like, oh my God, but the my other videos haven't gone viral. So they're looking for the next thing to go viral. And they're not thinking about the business side of that. Okay, you've gone viral. So how can you turn this into an actual brand? Or is it an actual brand? You know who's done a really good job of that recently? Risa Tisa. You know, she went she went viral for her Who the F Did I Marry? She, she got the right representation. She's partnered with a lot of really great brands. She's turned her, her viral story in, in, into an actual show that's going to be produced. That is probably the only one that I've seen really turn going viral recently. 
I know there are other examples. But recently, going viral has turned into a brand. Just saying. But that's just my thought, okay? That's just my thought. Kat says OnlyFans is the next step for many. And I'm not judging those that do that. That young lady, what was her name, Bad Baby? She made tons of money off of OnlyFans and pervs, let's be honest, okay? So I've noticed that with this next generation that it's all about going viral, and I don't think they are ready for what going viral even means. So I feel like we're going to see not just people going viral or people doing anything to go viral. We're going to see a lot of mental health challenges because, oh, I didn't do it. You know what I mean? I didn't go viral. So I wish y'all luck. <laughs> I wish y'all luck. I've been doing this a long time. I know I, I, I'm i new to some of you, but I've been doing this a long time. When I interviewed Oprah, that was, oh my gosh, 12 years ago? I think it was like 12 years ago this uh, this year. So I've been doing this a long time. And it's taken me a long time because I remember when I interviewed Oprah, I thought, it's it. I, I've done it. <laughs> I'm going to have my show. I'm going to fast forward. <laughs> look, fast forward. It it took how, how long before even, and look, I I'm, I'm still haven't reached the place I want to go. So just saying, everybody trying to go viral. Don't know what that means or what, or what to do with it. How did I lead to this? Oh, Khalid. <laughs> Khalid. So congratulations to Khalid on whatever his next, I think you're, you're fine, Khalid. Don't address this anymore. All right. Oh, Cosmic Journey. I love your photo of Beyonce. Is that from Kamala's uh, rally in Houston? Gorgeous photo. I like her with the honey blonde hair. Anyways, who's going to watch Beyonce during the Netflix uh, halftime thing that she's doing? I I know there's a football game happening, but I don't care about that. I'm just going to, I'm there for the Beyonce concert. Netflix, you better not fail me. Y'all failed Mike Tyson, but I don't care about the sports, so who cares? But when is it supposed to be? Thanksgiving? Is it on Thanksgiving Day or is it on Christmas Day? I can't remember. Cosmic Journey, I know you're a Beyonce stan. When is this? Is it this week? Because I need to make sure that I'm watching. Is it for Christmas Day or is it Thanksgiving Day? Thanksgiving Day. Oh, sooky, sooky. Now, are we ready? (laughs) She's going to be performing music from Cowboy Carter. She hasn't performed that music live. And I'm sure she's going to announce something, too. Netflix, y'all need to get it together. The Love is Blind live that y'all y'all did failed a couple of years ago. This whole Mike Tyson and whatever, his, the Jake Paul fight didn't work. Don't play with us with Beyonce. The Beehive will get you. They will file a class action lawsuit against you. Don't play with, don't play. It's Christmas Day? Oh, no, it's Christmas Day. Oh, well, well, they have time there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Cosmic Journey. So, uh, so they have t- they have time to get it together. Well, that, that means I can. Whew, I won't miss it. All right, I won't miss it. <laughs> so, Christmas Day is when Beyonce will be performing on Netflix at somebody's football game. <laughs> Look at somebody's football game. Fine. And Melissa says, "Am I the only one who thinks Beyonce is overrated? I just don't get the hype of, of her." Well, that's on you. Okay. I can I can understand being critical of Beyonce, but it does, how are we getting to Beyonce right now? I'm going to say my piece and then I'm leaving. I can understand people not liking Beyonce music or liking Beyonce's voice, but to say she's overrated, I just can't say that. Even if I didn't like Beyonce, I could never say that she's overrated. All right? Because Homegirl works harder than people that should be working harder. Like she does, she doesn't have to have to work as hard as she currently works, and she still does it because she's passionate about it. So people like that, I'm always going to give credit, and I would never say that they're overrated. Just, just saying. That's just my personal thought. But who cares? What happened now? What is y'all changing the date on me? Oh shoot! You're right. Christmas is a month away. <laughs> Oh my God, see? And then y'all wonder why I told you y'all need to start thinking about your gifts, okay? Oh, Funky says, it'll be clear on YouTube. Someone will stream it. You can't stream it if Netflix is not streaming properly, though. (laughs) I think eventually, after it streams, Netflix is going to get it together. That will be our Christmas gift. Right, Netflix? Where am I going to be on Christmas Day? In front of my television watching the Beyonce concert at the football game. Just saying. Guys, if you like the video, can we get to 500 likes? Can we get to 500 likes? Miss Sharon says Taylor Swift is overrated. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> Ray says her music is cool. I like her. I like I like songs here and there, but as an overall artist and performer, she got it. See, 
Anyways, I say all that to say thank you to all of you for being here. Shout out to our, our King's Guard. Shout out to our channel members. Become a member today at teamcampari.com backslash join. And shout out to our subscribers and those of you watching in the bushes. Replay crew, be sure to let us know your thoughts on every topic that we discussed. All right, Mama Ali's working on the timestamps, right, Mama Ali? And then we will be posting that for those that want to just jump to certain stories. Don't forget the Kempire After Dark live experience is coming to London on December 8th. December 8th. I can't wait. Literally be traveling there very soon. And then we're coming back to Washington, D.C. on January 24th. It's a Friday night. D.C., you're already showing out. Don't forget to get your tickets. We're going to talk about everything. And we're going to talk about that damn TJ. Maybe I'll invite TJ. To, no, I'm not inviting TJ. Never mind. Anyways, it's, I don't invite some of the reality TV stars or celebrities to these Kemper After Dark Live experience because I want us to talk that talk when we're together. All right? I know we did it for our last New York City show, but the next New York City show, hopefully in February, no. <laughs> Look, no. Anyways, Moving along, moving along, moving along. All right, guys, don't forget to like the video if you haven't already. We have over 1,200 of you here. We should have at least 500 likes. Can we get there? All right, God's child says, hey, I'm late, but hey, Kempar, hey, hey. All right, I'm going to get out of here, and all you Beyonce haters can go. No, <laughs> Guys, if you missed it, we were live earlier today for our Real Housewives of Potomac and Married to Medicine recaps. So make sure you check those out. You can hear audio versions of lives like this one and our recaps from earlier on the Kempire podcast. Please do me a favor. Ken, for my Christmas, we, have, we are a month away. There's 1,200 of you here. If all of you went to your podcast platform and you gave us a five-star rating, five stars, nothing less, we would reach our goal. That... Can that be a Christmas present to Kempire? I do so much for you. <laughs> Look, I do so much for all of you. Can that be my Christmas present? Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. Anyways, I'll see you all on tour. Goodbye, y'all. Good night. Exactly. B says, holy ghost fire to you all. <laughs> Have a good night, y'all. I can't believe I actually came on live. Whew, I'm tired. Let me go take a shower and go to bed. I deserve the, I deserve the break. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you to all of you for being here. Replay crew, let me know your thoughts on everything that we covered. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to Kempire here on the Kempire Radio Podcast. As always, don't forget to give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. And for everything Kempire Radio, head on over to KempireRadio.com.